Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. A big thanks to Brandon for his review of Tennis World Tour 2 on the Nintendo Switch. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really enjoy tennis myself and he absolutely loves it, so I was the perfect person for this review. I've been waiting for a new tennis game to satisfy my needs since the release of Top Spin 4 back in 2011. Although Mario Tennis Aces was great fun to play, it didn't fill me with the joy that a sports simulator game should do. The initial release of AO Tennis 1 in 2018 didn't hit the highs the sporting gaming community was hoping for and and was met with mediocre reviews at best. Over two years later, Breakpoint, this time around joining forces with Big Ant Studio, the team behind the slightly more successful AO Tennis 2, have returned with Tennis World Tour 2. Will it be 30-something love or absolute hate? Let's find out. Built from the ground up, Tennis World Tour 2 tries to recapture what's been lacking for the best part of a decade, realistic tennis gameplay in a video game, and as much as it pains me to say this, they failed miserably. It's very quickly evident that, although clearly some thought has gone into the regeneration of gameplay here, it's just sadly been executed quite poorly. And that's not to say it doesn't have its good moments, such as the competitive rallies which are possible, and when you succeed, even losing the point still feels quite good. Sadly, these moments are either far too infrequent or, in an even more frustrating turn of events, your magnificent rally is destroyed by a gameplay bug. The controls are quite standard, using the left stick to move and different buttons to do different shot types, but players very often just don't move to where you want them to. You can be holding left and sprint as hard as you want, but if the game has made its mind up, you aren't going anywhere. In some points during my gameplay, without my input, my player did a perfect 180 turn away from the ball at such speed, Usain Bolt would have been proud. And it's moments like this that not only let the gameplay score down, but also affect the realism the studio was aiming for, which in turn affects the visual score as well. Interestingly, Big Ant Studios have made some great strides over the years with their artificial intelligence, particularly with their latest release, AO Tennis 2. Players would realistically react to shots for the most part, and in turn, your opponent on the other side of the court was capable of a realistic game. That just made sense. You could understand and their decisions, shot choices, and they were varied and often quite smart. It was by far the best replication of a tennis game since the glory days of Top Spin 4. All this progress, however, seems to have been wasted. I've played lobs directly at my opponent to see what they would do, given the perfect opportunity for an easy smash winner. The answer? Stand and do nothing. Let the ball slowly bounce past you, then show a cutscene of that player being disappointed in himself, and rightly so too. Also, I am simply not a fan of this card system that Breakpoint has insisted on reinstating. Not only does it make the game feel unrealistic, I'm not actually sure that these cards even make a noticeable difference to the gameplay. All that being said, Tennis World Tour 2 still has a lot going for it on the face of things. There are a plethora of game modes to work through, accommodating various types of player. If you're more of a casual, then you'll probably enjoy the exhibition and tournament modes alone, the latter allowing two licensed tournaments to be at your fingertips, an exhibition giving you a choice from the largest bank of professional players we've yet seen in a tennis game, with a limited choice of outfits for each. A rather interesting addition to the gameplay this year has taken the once simple aesthetic choice of selecting which court to play on and turning it into a crucial aspect of how your game will play out. Each surface has its pros and cons, as well as weather also taking an effect on various gameplay aspects, including how the court reacts to the ball and the stamina level of your player can also be affected. Once you step into the court, these choices may not instantly feel like a game changer. However, as you play through a grueling five set match, you'll begin to notice even subtle changes that may not have previously been apparent. On top of this, tournament mode gives you the opportunity to play at Roland Garros or in the exciting tiebreak 10 setup. And out of the two, I have to say the latter is much more enjoyable. Tennis fans themselves are likely to head straight over to the career mode. A reasonably in-depth creation tool welcomes you, allowing you a variety of choices of how best to personalize your player. Your swing, serve and even the grunting noises are interchangeable here. Once you dive a little deeper into this mode, you can choose which tournaments to play, build a team around yourself and even decide when to take a rest and replenish your stamina, which are all welcome additions and certainly build a more immersive experience. That being said, when it comes to playing matches, you're presented with that same gameplay, which in all honesty, isn't the best. The eagle-eyed among you who have seen the trailer might be saying, I'm sure I saw an online section in the main menu. Well, yeah, you did. And if anyone actually manages to find a game in any of the online modes, please do let me know because uh, I'm still waiting. <sighs> really, it's the controls where things start to get 
a tiny bit better. Breakpoint and Big Ant Studios have presented us with a control scheme that for many will be an easy enough pick up and play. There are a few welcome additions, like a new sprint button, as well as a completely new serving mechanic that closely resembles its real life counterpart, forcing you to consider the direction of your ball toss depending on the type of serve you wish to deliver. Unfortunately, once again, there's a slight issue though. The game does let itself down with its aiming mechanic. It feels inconsistent, as if there isn't a real way to aim a shot, only vaguely left, right or center. Even when perfectly timed, it's tough to hit even a small, simple target in the middle of the court. For a game that puts so much emphasis on its aiming and timing mechanics in the build-up, this is certainly disappointing. Overall then, for gameplay, it's disappointing and feels a bit like one step forward, three steps back. Gameplay scores nine out of 20. The controls, while pretty standard, just aren't precise enough and it's a real shame. Controls score 12 out of 20. Audio is quite well executed throughout, but unfortunately there just, again, isn't enough here. There's no commentary, making a match feel quite long and drawn out, especially as crowd noises can become quite repetitive. However, what I will say in contrast to that is that it's much preferable in comparison to something like WWE 2K Battlegrounds, where bad commentary becomes a hindrance to the experience. There is a respectable amount of variation when it comes to individual player noises. Some players, such as Nadal, carrying over their own personal shout from AO Tennis 2 to great effect, and the soundtrack is not too bad either. Overall then, sound and audio are good, just not great. They score 14 out of 20. With the next generation just around the corner, many gamers are talking about the crazy visual demos we've been seeing for new games coming across to the new console. And once again, with the improved visuals in AO Tennis 2 from other recent tennis titles, I was very hopeful, as were most of the community. It appears though that once again, this aspect does not reach the expectations of the fans. A very quick look at the comments on the official TWT2 Twitter page, and you'll see the fans describing the visuals as, and I quote, worse than PS3 graphics, and lamenting how is it that 10 years after the release of Top Spoon 4, that even graphically, we are still behind that release and I share their sentiment. Some court surroundings are so blurry it's difficult to read the sponsors at the back of the court. In handheld mode, this is downright impossible in most cases. And this is before we even delve into the realm of frame rate dropping and extreme load times, which unfortunately this game is riddled with, regardless of whether you play docked or handheld. The whole thing feels entirely inconsistent. In terms of the visuals, there are a couple of positives. Some of the character models are excellent. Up close, you can clearly and instantly see who they are, but on the flip side of that others are barely recognizable and I had to read the name beside the character build of Grigor Dimitrov to find out who he was. I did think the scoreboards are quite nice and clean and licensed tournaments such as the aforementioned tiebreak 10s tournament they're a bit of a highlight in this department but all things considered the visuals just aren't very good the performance doesn't match it and once again Nintendo Switch owners are left squinting a Vaseline covered blurry mess. Visual score 7 out of 20. The game's going to set you back £53.99 or your regional equivalent. Given the current state of it, I would in no way recommend purchasing it at that price. The fact that you can pick this game up at some outlets for about £39 already, physically, given this was only released on Friday, should give gamers an idea of its current state. Even given a sale, I would recommend any tennis fans to purchase the far superior AO Tennis 2. The only saving grace here is that there's a good amount of content. It does feature online play if you can ever get a game, but I don't think this offers value for money. I'd score value 5 out of 20. So that was Brandon's review of Tennis World Tour 2 on Nintendo Switch, and I'm gonna take a punt here and say that I don't think he enjoyed it. It scores a final switch-up score, 47%. Ouch. We've had a couple of stinking games in these last couple of weeks, haven't we? My word. Right, a big thanks to all of you who watch the channel. Please do leave Brandon a comment down below. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, oh, and a big thanks to our patrons. Keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya. 15 love.
49. Catch him up. 